Welcome everybody. Of course, I am Steven and we are doing something a little bit differently now on this channel. I am now doing my first ever interview, which is really exciting. I've never interviewed anyone before. We got a special guest here with us today. So I think this interview will either go one of two directions, either go miserably terribly because it's my first interview ever or beginner's luck and it'll actually get phenomenal. But I think my guest here will help me out a lot because he is super awesome. Mr. Do uh, Todd Pickman, Dr. Todd, get after it. Big Jocko guy, we have that in common. Uh, so I was actually just out to see Dr. Todd out in Boise, Idaho, in a little suburb out in Meridian, uh, for a little seminar workshop. It was the Impact event where, you know, some of you guys have talked about this a little bit, but where I went out to learn a lot of Dr. Todd's systems and procedures that he is teaching other chiropractors. It's absolutely phenomenal. We'll touch a little bit about it here in the interview today. Uh, but Dr. Todd, thank you for joining us. Cool, thanks for having me. Yeah, and so I, I think probably the best place to start just to give your audience an idea of how this all came to be, how you and I met, why we do what we do is just to touch a little bit on my story and my background because I at one point too was a chiropractic student. I feel like it was yes. a lot more recent than 18 years ago. I don't know where all the yeah. time goes, but you just watch out. You'll blink. It'll be 18 years for you too. You'll have a gnarly beard like me and it's all over. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, I'm, I'm, st I'm still waiting on that beard to come in. But <laughs> let, let's talk about that. I, I love hearing the the why, the story about you know if you brief, briefly want to talk about how you started out in chiropractic, what really got you into chiropractic to begin with, and then sure. sort of show your evolution as a chiropractor over the last 18 years. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I got into chiropractic, and this is a story that I tell patients as well, and I think it's important for all chiropractors to have a story, have a chiropractic story because that helps build trust and rapport and connection. And then patients understand that you're a human being just like they are and they can, and, and mo most of us have cool chiropractic stories, I hope. I mean, I've met some that just have lame stories. They're like, oh, I just wanted to make a lot of money. And I thought being a chiropractor was good or something like that. But fortunately, that's not my story. Uh, my story, as far as how I got into chiropractic, I, I hurt my neck when I was in second grade. And I grew up as that kid that always had an injury. And, and if I played sports or I did anything, it was, I was going to hurt myself. And I was told by my mom's orthopedic surgeon, because my mom had uh, spine surgery on her low back years and years ago, back when I was a little kid. So she took me to go see him one time when I had hurt my neck and I was all spasmed up. He had basically told me and my family, well, once you have a, a neck injury or a spine injury, you always have a spine injury and you're just going to have problems and you just have to deal with it and you have to just be careful. And that's really the medical solution a lot of times is just patch it up until it gets so bad that then you do something major like injections and surgery or live on painkillers your whole life. So I grew up from second grade all the way to when I was 17 years old, never went to a chiropractor, had reoccurring neck problems. So over and over and over again. Like every time I would do something, my neck would go out and I'd be stuck. I'd have like a torticollis or um, just, just pain. And finally, when I was 17, that's when it got at its absolute worst. I was getting into weightlifting and I was doing squats. And I remember I had a bar on my spine and I, I felt something crunch in my spine. And then the next day, my arm started aching and I had pain and numbness and my neck spasmed up like it had always had. And I went and saw a physical therapist. And the physical therapist took me through some like e-stem and exercises. And I did that for several weeks and I was really not getting any better. Forced myself to get back into the gym, working out through pain and a personal trainer there told me to go see his chiropractor. And all I knew was I had a girlfriend at the time that saw a chiropractor and I used to make fun of her with a friend of mine saying she was seeing a witch, like, you know, a witch doctor <laughs> and not even sure why we were making fun of her. I was just kind of following the lead of this friend of mine who thought it was, you know, slick to make fun of her because she went to a chiropractor. And so anyway, I go see this chiropractor, he takes x-ray, shows me that my neck is going the wrong way. And, I, and, and, and he starts adjusting me. And literally it felt like someone pulled an ice pick out of my spine that I had in there for years. And so it didn't take long for me to say, this is what I want to do. Okay. And, 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 and at the time I was taking some classes. I, I graduated high school when I was 17. So I just started getting into some like community college, taking some core classes. I was leaning towards environmental science. So I was starting to take some sciences some physics and chemistry. And I pulled the plug on that and said, I want to start looking at going to chiropractic school. So 
decided to go to chiropractic school, started the chiropractic program when I was 19, finished all my prerequisites as fast as I could, graduated when I was 22, and learned about Gonstead right before I got into chiropractic college, actually. Like right before I got into chiropractic college, I met a guy that went to Cleveland Chiropractic in Los Angeles that was about to graduate. He had done Gonstead. He told me about it. He actually steered me away from going to LACC, which didn't teach Gonstead, and got me to go to Cleveland, which has since closed. Rest in peace, Cleveland Chiropractic College, Los Angeles. And so I went to Cleveland so I could take Gonstead. And I became the president of the Gonstead Club, went to 22 Gonstead seminars before I graduated chiropractic school, hardcore into Gonstead, and went went to Albuquerque, New Mexico to work with a guy named Dr. Mike Rosenblum, who was a mentor of mine. He used to teach at the Gunstead seminars. I went and worked for him, learned from him, excellent communicator, um, very basic setup, basic Gunstead setup for the first several years where you just see a ton of new patients. You see them three to five times, you never see them again. And some of them stick around, very few do, but we just saw tons of new patients. So it was like this new patient mill. And I just thought that's what chiropractic was. It was just like, you just have to see a ton of people. You got to kill yourself. You got to just adjust all day long and you don't have time to talk about anything else. And if you do, you're kind of less of a chiropractor because you should, you should spend your time adjusting people because adjusting is the most important thing you can do for your patient. They can find out about other stuff elsewhere. They can find out about exercise. You know, they can, they can just kind of like stumble upon this stuff and you can roll the dice on their care and expect that, that they're going to end up somewhere that's going to give them great answers and be supportive of you as a chiropractor. Right. 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 which is which is very wishful thinking and i learned that a lot because we lost a ton of patients they would go see a personal trainer or a physical therapist or someone else that would show them how to stretch their piriformis and they would think this person was this gift from god you know meanwhile i'm you know taking x-rays on them analyzing it adjusting their seventh cervical perfectly knowing how impactful that is however the person still had some tightness or something that wasn't addressed and I was too busy to address it. And I thought I was above that. I thought that was, you know, that's what non-skilled chiropractors do is they talk about exercise and, you know, us, us great chiropractors, we just adjust, which mm-hmm. is funny because now 18 years later, and I've been doing a lot of rehab and a, a very well-rounded approach in chiropractic for several years now, this is the same kind of garbage I hear from chiropractors now, like just yesterday, you know, I, I tagged you in that Facebook post. We got that guy up in Canada that just starts ripping on us and and <laughs> talking smack for no reason other than he does an adjustment only practice, thinks that I am inferior because I'm promoting functional movement, knows nothing about the story or the journey or why we do what we do, which is for clinical excellence and better patient care and ultimately to up the image and the status of chiropractic, you know? And so that is the start of the story. And anyway, I went to Albuquerque, New Mexico, practiced there for eight years, learned about curve correction with chiropractic biophysics, ended up relocating to Eagle, Idaho, which is right outside of Boise, partnered with Dr. Deed Harrison from chiropractic biophysics, was going to be an instructor for that technique. I mean, that's basically why I moved out here because that was a vision. I figured, okay, I'm switching gears now from chiropractic clinician to uh, I want to do research and I want to be more of an instructor and help out with CBP. I thought CBP was such a great adjunct to Gonstead as far as Gonstead's very specific segmentally. CBP is very specific rehab and curve wise. Has lots of science and evidence behind it. And, and then anyway, um, realized several months into that, that as much as I love learning from Deed, didn't want to really work with them necessarily, didn't, didn't align with all the same philosophies. So we left that clinic amicably, moved on, built our own clinic, put it on the other side of town to respect the fact that I'd come out here for their clinic, didn't want to like impose and be too close by them, moved on the other side of town, built Gonstead Spine and Wellness, And I call it spine and wellness because I had a vision for doing more than adjusting curve correction. I wanted to do the third part, which was functional rehab. And meaning I wanted to have an exercise department. I had always exercised. I knew how important it was. 
I knew how important movement was. I knew there was a lot that I still wanted to learn in it. And I knew this would motivate me to really dive into it and learn things that I would benefit from in my own selfish interests of making sure I could move when I'm 90 and a hundred years old, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is that most, most, if not everything that I've done in practice is for my own selfish interest initially, meaning I had a bad curve in my neck. I wanted a curve. Okay. So I'm like, I'm going to learn chiropractic biophysics so I can get a curve back in my neck. Right. Right. And, and then it was, I feel like I'm stiff and immobile and I did lots of bodybuilding stuff in the past. And I think it made me mm-hmm. dysfunctional. I want to learn a better way so I can be functional for the rest of my life. And, 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 and so anyway, right. that's where it brings us to, to today is about four years ago, we started bottling these processes and procedures that we do in our clinic that I think we've refined and done quite successfully. And we built a program called Move Now University, which really takes like the last 18 years of practice, what I've learned and put into a step-by-step process so others can benefit from the same systems, the same clinical aspect. And while there's so many variables in our members now, you know, like to date right now, on this date, on what, what are we at? November was the eighth. Uh, yeah, seventh, yeah, seventh. There you go. Oh, November seventh, twenty twenty. So as of today, we have hundred and sixty chiropractors that are part of our program all over the world, in Australia, in China, um, uh, where else? A bunch in Canada, uh, New Zealand, Iceland. Iceland there's a, yeah. There's a big Gonstead clinic in Iceland. It's a two-story clinic with an elevator and they put Move Now University into their Gonstead clinic. How cool is that, right? Uh, there's a big upper cervical clinic that sees 2,500 patient visits a week with a bunch of doctors and a ton of staff in Canada. They put Move Now University into the clinic. So we're in upper cervical clinics, Gonstead clinics, diversified clinics, SOT, activator, like every technique that when I was in school, I was like, Gonstead police. If you don't do Gonstead, you know, I don't want to talk to you. And now I'm at the point where the thing that really, I feel like binds me to the chiropractors is this desire to have well-rounded clinical excellence, not to water down our message as chiropractors, uh, to support our chiropractic philosophy that the body is a self-healing, self-regulating organism. The statement, nature needs no help, just no interference. I feel like it does need a little help sometimes. And that help is curve correction and functional movement and the adjustment. I mean, that is the help, right? Yeah, 100%. But, but yeah, so anyway, so that's my story. And in this first ever interview, that's me talking for however many minutes straight. <laughs> and, 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 now and we'll close it off here. <laughs> and I'll throw it back to you. I love it. I love it. But that, that, that's, how, that's how you talk. And I absolutely love it. You give so much. Like I, I wrote down so many gold nuggets that I kind of want to go back to there. And thank you for sharing all of that. It, it's quite interesting to see how your whole process has evolved. And I'm glad that we, we started out there. And really a part of the evolution. I mean, we have a lot of similarities. You know, we got had young injuries. I had a lot of other neck issues, torticollis and things. And, and that's what kind of led me down this path of trying to heal myself, which led me into physical therapy. Then I had limitations with that, which then brought me into chiropractic and that changed everything for me. Whoa. And then, and then getting into a lot of the movement, functional movement aspects with that too, to really understand what was going on with me. And then, and then correcting that has just been transformational. And so you said giving the care that you would want to do to heal yourself. And it's kind of interesting how that happens with us because we're kind of called into being healers, if, if you want to believe that. And in a lot of ways, it's like the way of which we try to heal ourselves is ultimately how we provide that greatest gift for other people. Um, and so that's absolutely incredible here. And so what I love too about what you've done here in your clinic, you know, we talked about how you're doing the functional movement aspect. Okay. And well, first, if you want to, get into this, you know, like now you're at the point where you have your segment posture and movement. That's kind of what your clinic is essentially molded around. Yes. So right. you have the segment of the spine, which is more segmental adjusting using specific Gonstead care. And then you have a lot of posture corrections, which is happening naturally through the adjustments, but also with exercises that you do and with additional curve correction, if necessary. Traction. And then you have the movement, which is more of the you have traction, right? And then you have the movement aspect with all the functional movement rehab. So do you want to go a little bit more in depth and kind of 
break that three tier down because I think that's extremely valuable, the, the segment and the posture and the movement that you did. Sure, sure. And I think that you just did that to an extent. I think the piece, right. the piece that I could throw into there is that something that, that, that I said, and it wasn't rehearsed at the last impact event, but it was funny. Dr. Jeff Kronk from smart injury doctors came up or he said, he said to me afterwards, he's like, you know, Todd, when you said that, that helped connect, connect things for me. Like it hadn't before. Um, and I said, well, what was that? And, and, and he said, well, and, and basically something that I'd said is I said that in medicine, you have the pharmaceutical companies market for medical doctors. They market a product for medical doctors. They make the job very easy. And the population is indoctrinated with this idea that drugs are good. Drugs are the solution. And when I have a problem, I'm going to go into the doctor and I'm going to ask them for this color pill based on how, how they've been taught. Right? So it makes it very easy for them. And I said, what is our equivalent to that in chiropractic? We don't have an equivalent for chiropractic itself, but we do have a secret way, a little ninja way of getting back to that. And that's with movement exercise. We can start with exercise and we can work our way back to chiropractic. And what do I mean by that is that everyone knows that exercise is good. There's no one out there that thinks exercise is bad. You know, like exercise inherently is a bad thing. Everyone thinks, no, exercise is good. There's different opinions, different types of exercise, but exercise is what you need. It's one of the pillars of health. So people get that. Not saying they all do it. There's a lot of people that don't exercise, but they know they should. Right. Okay. And, and other providers understand rehab and physical therapy and movement, and they see that as a good thing, like medical providers and surgeons and, and et cetera chiropractors have always been this black sheep and this thing that, you know, is like out on the edge and doesn't necessarily fit in anywhere. And there's a lot of explaining to do as far as why would you adjust and what's a subluxation. And you have people that say, Oh, subluxation is this bad word. You should talk about segmental dysfunction restriction and like whatever you want to call it. The trick is we start with movement we, we find a common ground with people. We talk about the importance of exercise and movement. Exercise is important, but what if you can't move a certain way? What if it hurts to move? What if your movement pattern is dysfunctional and when you exercise, you injure yourself? Okay, like what if, what if now this good thing, exercise, creates injury? It's not good. But why is that? Either there's something faulty with movement and it's joint muscle brain. So it's either a joint problem, muscle, muscle which is really connective tissue when I'm saying muscles. So yep. fascia and muscular tenderness yep. and then brain motor control problem with yeah. how we perceive moving from point A to point B. Are we moving in a way from point A to point B where we get the job done, but it's dysfunctional and it's causing injury and it's not how the body was intended to move. Right? right. So there's, why can't you move? Well, that's the question. It's either a joint muscle or brain issue. Joint mm -hmm. is chiropractic for sure. Others can assign other things to being chiropractic, but segment and joint is chiropractic. I mean, that's what I see. Segment, joint. Yep. It says segment, joint, adjustment, nervous system. That is chiropractic. Okay. There's, there's broader ways though of looking at nervous system because if you have a segmental problem that weakens your posture, it causes the shift and distort. If you, if you have a thoracic hyperkyphosis, this is talked about a ton in the peer reviewed literature. This is the thing that, intrigued me the most about chiropractic biophysics is that postural hyperkyphosis causes a decreased life expectancy. That's been studied in multiple, multiple peer reviewed journals. Big author is Cato, K-A-D-O in the Rancho Bernardo studies out in California. They took community dwelling individuals. They measured the, the head to wall distance. They had them back up against a wall. They measured how far the head stuck off the wall. And the further the head stuck off the wall, the more, the more comorbidities these people had, the more drugs they took, and the quicker they died. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so th that was a huge study. They had several thousand participants. And there's been many studies done since then. There's a sit-stand study that looks at the ability to sit down without using your arms, your legs, to like cross your legs and sit down and then stand back up again. And 
it was awarded 10 points if you can do it perfectly up and down every time you have to put an arm down or elbow down or knee down on the way down or on the way up you take a point off they then looked at that score they found the lower the score the worst health outcomes the lower life expectancy okay so that's where i step back and say I'm not looking to be dogmatic in chiropractic to say, I'm only going to adjust because that's what you're supposed to do. I, I'm looking for the best outcomes for my patients. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that addressing posture or movement violates that. But, but instead I feel like it supports it even more thoroughly. Okay. Yeah. And so to, to further elaborate, if I need to further elaborate on segment posture movement, it, it's a, uh, Posture gets screwed up. It screws up life expectancy from these studies. But how does it do that? It physically puts a tension on your spinal cord. You have 31 pairs of spinal nerve roots. Those are attached to your, to your spinal cord. Those are now going to be on more tension. And this is something that is observed at MRI. It was, it was demonstrated by famous neurosurgeon, Dr. Alf Bregg, who showed that spinal cord biomechanics, spinal, spinal cord tension gets affected by postural distortions, which affects nerve function, which affects health outcomes. So I feel like chiropractic biophysics did a huge thing by really elaborating on how do you define these postural distortions? And then how do you understand spinal coupling patterns? How do you fix this stuff with postural corrective exercise, traction, and types of adjusting? And even though that, that's such a great system, it left something on the table that was not addressed, which was just because you fix someone's posture and you fix the segmental integrity, they do not magically start moving well. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It's not like, okay, good. Now just figure it out again. And let's see you do an overhead deep squat. Okay. Yeah. Or like, okay, now you can hip hinge. No, it's it, 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 like people don't even know how to breathe properly. All right. Most people breathe like this and they wonder why they're so tight in their traps because they elevate their traps 10,000 times a day, just breathing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so th these are things that people need to learn. And I feel like we are the best suited to teach people this versus rolling the dice, thinking that they're going to find someone else that's going to do it. That, like I said earlier, is also going to embrace what you do as a chiropractor and not just bad mouth you and say, Oh, don't waste your time seeing this chiropractor. Come see me. I can teach you all these exercises and all this kind of stuff. Now on the same note, I'm not saying that I personally enjoy teaching exercises all day long. To be honest, I think it's fun. Sometimes it breaks up, breaks up the whole flow of adjusting people nonstop. And I'm saying this after 18 years of adjusting people nonstop. So the first several years in practice, all you want to do is adjust people nonstop. And then after a while, you're like, Hey, it's fun to teach some different things and to go through some instruction and to get more interactive with patients. But even, even still at this point, 95% of my time is spent adjusting patients and building out clinical recommendations, not teaching exercise, not setting them up in traction. I have staff that does that. I have staff that I've trained and I, I, and, and, and I'll say as far as my time and my time is training staff. So, mm -hmm. so, so I would, I would rather do that and be able to adjust and be able to connect with my patients and build out their, their clinical recommendations and have a team and have different departments in my clinic that are carrying out clinical excellence. So the patient gets the best results possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we built. That's what we do. And that's what we teach in move now university is all the systems that go into that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, it, it goes and there, there's so much again, that, that's why I'm so glad that you put the move now university together because it goes so deep into the systems, the procedures, it goes so much deep into Oh my gosh, looking at all these movement dysfunctions and how, exactly how to correct them and the process to go through that and what that plane looks like to actually correct that stuff and how to measure that. It's just, it's so incredible. And truly, I don't think that anything like this exists anywhere. And it's no, truly, it truly incredible the, the way that this has gotten put together. And I, I want to go back to like, you said something like it, people understand that posture is not good, right? Now, maybe they haven't read the Cato studies and don't understand how it creates spinal cord tension, but everyone knows that like, oh, bad posture isn't good. It causes pains and all of that. People understand movement is good and they understand whenever they're not as flexible or they know that they're getting not as mobile or can't do things yeah. they used to do. They understand that that's not good for them. And what 
I, I think how this relates so much more into the chiropractic philosophy, how this relates into what differentiates us from any other profession is the specificity aspect. It is how we communicate with our patients to actually find the root cause of what's causing the problem. And that's what makes the subluxation stand out because we're the only people in the profession or in, in all of healthcare that actually acknowledges the subluxation. So whenever there is a subluxation present, we fix it like, woo, there goes the, the chiropractic miracle stories. And yet you look at like, you know, I go back to my own personal story, for example, whenever I was recovering from an ACL injury, right? I go to, and I'm not dogging any, 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 this is just the process of which I went through. So I, I go to the physical therapy to do my rehab and they were all focused on the knee itself on, which is understandable, getting inflammation now, getting, regaining flexibility in the knee, as well as doing knee strengthening exercises. Now we know in move now university, you have two main functions of joints. You have mobile joints and stable joints. So they're just focused on trying to strengthen the knee, strengthen the knee, strengthen the knee. And in the back of my mind, the entire time, given I'm in high school at the point, but I kept understanding, I'm like, I just feel like there's something else going on. Like to me, I'm like, I understand the importance of focusing on the knee and getting the knee working again. So I have full range of motion and boom, I can go back out and play again. But I was like, I just knew that the way my ACL tore, it just wasn't natural. There was something else going on. And that's when I learned from a chiropractor that I had lower cross syndrome and, but they broke it down even further, not just like, diagnosed me with something, but actually broke it down to find out that I had glute activation issues and working on strengthening that and different things in my posture, how it correlated and, and working with me that way and working on my spine directly that completely healed and transformed my own personal experience. And so I translate that into how does this affect me? How can I bring that light to other people? And that's what, how I found you, which is incredible, but it's seeing very specifically where the dysfunction is. And that's, what's incredible with like, you bring someone through this stuff, you're showing them where their posture's off. Exactly. You're like, you're showing them the exact measurements. You're showing them exactly what segment in the spine is irritated, but you're bringing it back to the whole, movement dysfunctions and not just saying like oh you need to stretch this or do this but it's like a very specific plan with like no you have this very specific dysfunction and we're going to do this and this and this to cause it we're going to remeasure that and they're like whoa that's insane then they can tell the difference and and then that ties back into the chiropractic work with the subluxation because then at that point they get how it's all related and that's right. what's important as you said it's important yeah. to see how chiropractic is related with all of this and the results have been incredible. Just seeing some case studies that are coming out of your clinic are, uh, are really, really incredible. Um, and so one thing, you know, Dr. Todd, we have, this is an audience largely of chiropractic students or people who are wanting to come into chiropractic. I think, I hope that they got this, a lot of value out of this little short interview we did. I know we kind of touched the service on a lot of stuff. We could probably get so much deeper in a lot of this and maybe we will in the future, but I know you have a sort of you're creating more of a platform for move now for students. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I actually just recorded a video this morning going through a demo of insider program, but really speaking to the different points and knowing that I'm speaking to students and not, not seasoned practicing chiropractors. And so as I went through and did that, it became very clear. And especially after meeting you and some of our other newer members, it became very clear on how much, students really can benefit from this and learning this at a student level and not waiting until you get into practice. And so there is, there is a link that I can provide for you once we get it all put together. I'm still finishing building it right now, but it's basically a demo link where any of your audience can go through and they can watch, I don't even know how long it is because I haven't seen it yet, but I'm guessing around 30 minutes, probably about a 30 minute video of me going through and walking through how the systems work. To, to, to really give a better idea of the totality of what Move Now University is. Because it, it's way more than just, here's how you do a movement assessment, here's how you assign corrective protocols. That's a piece of it. But I would say the biggest piece, the most important piece that no one's teaching, no one's talking about, is that all the good stuff you're saying as far as, okay, being able to present this clinically and tie it together and support chiropractic and segment posture movement, all that, but it's getting people to care about it and getting patients to actually want to follow your recommendations and follow through with it because you could have the best treatment and techniques in the world, but if you don't have patients that are going to make it past visit three, then how impactful are you really being for your community? Yeah. Not so much. Right. Right. 
so yeah, so I will, I will provide you with that link so you can share that with your group and um, actually hold on. I, I might have it. I can say it out loud. Hold on. It is because I did make this yesterday and I'm just, yeah, I'll make sure, I'll make sure we link it as well. I'll put, I'll put it in the link in the description as well for everyone to check out. Yeah, I think it was, hold on, I'm going to take a second. This is like fresh off it's the fresh press. Off the press. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It's, it's demo dot move now you dot com slash prepared demo dot move now you dot com slash prepared awesome prepared, make sure yeah. we link that down i i encourage you guys what watch that demo because it, it really is interesting and I've, i find this work so so interesting it really just ties so much together in our own understanding i think it'll broaden perhaps your own perspective and understanding in chiropractic and really think it'll ultimately <laughs> make you a better chiropractor. I think to learn this stuff early, because I'm telling you, as someone who's the third year in chiropractic school, they don't teach this stuff in chiropractic school. Oh, and it's so, so important. I, I can't even explain the importance of actually learning this stuff. And, um, and you'll get a lot away from it too, because again, they don't teach this stuff in school. And what Dr. Todd is doing is really, really awesome. And so I, I love the work he does for sure. Cool. Well, thanks for having um, me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Todd, thank you for joining us on this first ever interview. I think it was a good one. I think, I think we did great. pretty good. Yeah, we did awesome. <laughs> good job. Steve. Awesome, guys. And as always, where can people, if they have questions for you, obviously they'll watch the demo, but if they want to follow you or get more involved with Move Now, where's the best place to follow you? Yeah, the best place is on Facebook. We have a group called Functional Movement for Chiropractors. You can just request and just tell me that you're a student and you heard this and I'll allow you in. That's one spot. You can email me. Uh, Dr. Todd, so D-R-T-O-D-D at movenowyou.com. We have a website, movenowyou.com. We have, yeah, we got all kinds of good stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's a couple places to start. Our, our clinic in Meridian, Idaho is called Gonstead Spine and Wellness. You can look that up. And um, yeah, and they can reach out to you too if they can't find any of those links that I just sent, which I give plenty of ways to contact us. So, <laughs> so. In this day and age, you should be able to find us from everything that I just told you. Yeah, sure, sure. So Absolutely. cool. Well, awesome, Dr. Todd. Well, thank you much, so All much right. for joining us, and uh, we'll talk soon. Cool. Thanks. Yep.